Lion resting on the snake bed. In beautiful Shirangam on the Kaveri River, he changes the evil hearts of people to good, helps them control their five senses, and relieves them of the burden of their troubles and sickness, making them his devotees so they can follow the ways of Dharma in their minds. When will I see him? So there is a lot to unpack in this verse. And one of the intentions today, um, I wanted to speak, of course, we are moving into a new year. We speak about different resolutions, changing certain qualities inside of us. And I wanted to pick a verse where it's about change. And also in this verse, we can see very beautifully and I highlighted them. So we go one sentence after the other, and I will speak a bit about it. So here, Perumal, he speaks about, he changes the evil hearts of people to good. Okay, raise your ha hand, who has negative qualities? Wow. Some are very holy, don't have negative qualities. But I see most of you have your hands up. Everybody has negative qualities. Amazing. Okay, it's not a surprise. But here we see who changes the evil qualities into good ones. It's God. Also in our case, it's not just God, it's our guru. So, these negative qualities is not something where you wake up and one day you are an alcoholic. I don't know if this ever happened. Maybe, I don't think so. But I remember Guruji was saying, when somebody is becoming an alcoholic, it means they repeated the same pattern over and over again. And slowly and slowly, this becomes something part of us. We develop a certain negative tendency. But the good news is that we reverse it and we can change that. In the same way how we can develop negative qualities, in the same way we can develop positive qualities. So as I said yesterday in the satsang, spirituality very often is less mystical as we think. Why you're sitting here is of course by grace of God, by grace of Guru, but also because we have certain tendencies, certain patterns inside of us which call out, which are harmonized with your environment, harmonized with the people around you. Because as Guruji was saying many times in satsang, you don't, um, when, you, when you are with a smoker, you, be, you become a smoker. When you are with people around you who are drinking, you, be, you start to drink after the 11th day, maybe even earlier, I don't know. But if you're with devotees, you start to change. Guruji, very interestingly, he tweeted actually today about it before, uh, actually when I made the satsang, then I was reading his tweets in the morning, and he was speaking about, exactly about that, about these tendencies to develop inside of us, how important it is. And he was saying, Crises and challenging times are mini deaths. They are precious feedbacks to us to see where we stand. And then he said something very interesting. He said, have we ever thought about that is the most ungrateful task to do? It can be done only by those who love immensely. And the very first quality of that love is that it is unconditional. And I was visualizing a specific scene. Imagine you have a dirty house. Guruji comes in your house and he cleans everything beautifully. And right after that, the moment he goes out of the room, we just make everything messy. This is what we do very often, day by day. We, we have to do something we don't do it, what Guruji is asking, what we read in the scriptures. And the blessings 
the grace which we received one day before, we can mess up in the next minute, in the next hour again. That's why Guruji is saying it's a very ungrateful job to do. In the next sentence, Perumal says, how important it is to control our five senses. I always have to laugh when some strangers ask about our path. Because very often I'm, I'm approached like, what is your parampara? Uh, where is your guru? How, where does he get, get his, um, how, to care, how to say, his authority and so on? You, you perceive in the questions there is a certain criticism. Why is he dressed like this? Why is he doing like this and so on? Very often receive the question because they just see the outside. But funny enough, very rarely somebody is asking me, what kind of values is your guru asking to you? What is he asking to you to change in your life? And one of the things which Guruji is ch asking us to change is to control the senses. From childhood, when I was in school, in, uh, and later on in work, nobody ever told me it's very important to control your senses. Nobody ever said that. Pleasure, sense pleasures, party, uh, I had five beers. You don't want to have a sixth beer, maybe a seventh. I changed myself, maybe have a strange uh, tilak on my forehead. I changed my uh, attire. And so my old friends, when they look at me, they just see that. They just think I just changed myself on the outside. But they don't ask, what is your guru actually wanting from you? When they would ask the question, I would just say, he wants the best. He wants to bring me to God. He wants to bring the best of the best inside of me. But people don't want to hear that. They just see Hindu rituals, they just see some strange music and so on. But actually, on the deeper level, he's asking us to be better human beings. From my family, not even one was asking me the questions. What is he actually asking from you? Be a better human being. Have a relationship to God. Love, love your people around you. Be compassionate. All these qualities. And that's the strange thing. So, Guruji was saying in, I think it was Bhakti Talks. Oh no, Shandila Bhakti Sutta maybe. So he was saying, Three qualities which God attracts. The first thing is purity. What is Guruji asking us? Have a pure mind. Feed your mind with positive things. Second, innocent. Be innocent like a child. Be playful like a child. When we look at the children here, how are they? They are how God has created them. Only later on when the mind kicks in, we start to accumulate more and more all these patterns from society, from family, from friends, from workmates and so on. And the third quality, which I think is very important, and this is our part, what we have to do the most, is perseverance. What is perseverance? Somebody's uh, nodding with the Perseverance means you keep on going. In German, Durchhaltevermögen. <laughs> just keep on going. And Guruji was just tweeting today about it. If we go through tests, if we go through troubles, this is the feedback which we receive back. Where are we standing? Are we going to back in our weaknesses? Are we going back into our old habits? Or do we keep this connection to God and Guru? Yeah, maybe it's not uh, comfortable, maybe we don't enjoy in that moment our path, but this is actually the crucial moment where we still 
choose to hold on God and Guru even when we don't feel even an inch. We hold on to him and this is how he brings us through that storm. Because very often we are like drug addicts. We are drug addicts of, I want to feel something. I want to have joy. I want to have, feel that peace. I want to feel in Korea something and so on. We are none other than drug addicts. Just going from one feeling to the other. But when we look at the saints, how they went through that storm, they keep on going, chanting, visualizing God's image, going through that storm. And then... What happens? There is a light at the end of the tunnel. So as Guruji says, the three qualities, perseverance. And this is what rings a lot in my mind to remember myself. Then, Peruma, uh, what was his name? Sorry, <laughs> Peruma. <laughs> uh, he's saying, relieves them of the burden of the troubles and sickness. And this, uh, I wanted to share a story, because one of the things which Guruji is very good in it is to show us contrasts in life. Even just the case that we are incarnated now, because people ask, why is God sending us here in this material life full of misery and so on? There are many answers to that, but one of the answers is that we actually see how it is to be in that condition, so later on we can appreciate what we always had. When you, when you suddenly don't have peace of your mind, later on you know what's the value of peace of your mind. If you don't have something to eat, you will know what's the value of having food on your table. Or table. And Guruji gave me very often these experiences of this contrast. Starting off my life before and then later on, or going through these troubles and having this contrast, how it is to lose something and suddenly to have it back and vice versa. And one of the greatest experiences, maybe, maybe even the greatest experiences which he gave me, it's a very long story, I cut it short just to make the point of that he's relieving us of our burden and sickness is when I was living here in the ashram, I had to leave for uh, financial reasons. I had to pay a debt. So I went back and I was working in a crazy environment, very negative people around me. So nobody was interested in God. Nobody was interested in spirituality, nothing. So at the beginning, I kind of hide it, still my path. But later on, of course, things come up. I just wanted to do my duty make my money and just go back to the ashram. So what happened? S things started to change. All my colleagues started to be against me, make fun of me. Uh, they made even messages on the, I was working in a restaurant. They wrote messages where they hand out the food. They put like images of saints there and wrote 666, Satan, devil and all this stuff. So I came in the kitchen, I looked at it, and the guy like with this very psycho look looks at me with a knife in his hand, and he says, no, nah, are you scared? Are you scared? And this was the moment I was really scared. <laughs> I was just terrified, it was because I was like in, in an environment Looking back how it is in the ashram, being surrounded by devoted, and suddenly I'm standing here in this kitchen and I'm thinking, I just don't want to be here. But actually the worst part of it is not the people, they are just how they are. They have their qualities, but to perceive that fear, that insecurity inside of me, that was the worst part. And I was asking myself, what did I actually learn from Guruji? One comment, one look, and suddenly I'm back in such a pitiful state that I'm thinking to myself, this is not real. So I went to my home 
and I was just looking at satsangs, I was trying to find the reason or how I can go through that. And then I went to the ashram, there was a darshan, I spoke to Guruji. He told me something what I should do. I came back to Vienna, back to the work, and suddenly the worst situation happened. No? He brings up all these insecurities. Huge drama in the work, and again, this fearful state. So I, I went back home, next day to the work, so I did, I just thought of God, the most intense way which I never did before. Just visualizing his form, chanting his name, because just to look outside, just to be in that surrounding, perceiving that fear, it was just like unbearable. And suddenly when I was going out of the kitchen, without me, doing any huge effort. Suddenly a thought appeared from deep, deep, deep of my being, which said, but I can't do it by myself. And suddenly, in that moment, everything changed. I was not expecting it. <laughs> uh, and I felt the love. It's crazy. Everything changed. <laughs> there was no fear. There was no insecurity. I just looked at my colleagues and just everything was like in high definition. It was just absolute peace. Like I look at my colleagues there was no good, bad, small, tiny, whatever. I was just standing in the middle of the restaurant and it was like in the Matrix movie, like everything was just like in slow motion and I was just observing. There was no difference if I'm somewhere in the Himalayas or in this chaotic restaurant, there was no distinction. And I just went to a table and I was looking at the guests ordering stuff. I was just looking at them. And there was no thought. There was no feeling awkward, like, oh my God, I'm looking and staring at these people. What do they think? There's just absolute peace. And so after that, I went back home and I perceived the divine in the trees, in the house. I was just crying. <laughs> I even wanted to do arati to the trees. <laughs> because I, I perceived God in that tree. And I went to my home, I was just sitting in front of my altar, and I was thinking, what the heck is happening? <laughs> so I went to sleep, the next day I wake up the same. I look at my hands, it's like on a, on a drug trip, like, whoa, who is this? No identification with, with the body. I was just walking around in my flat and everything was just fresh, new. Everything was just like, wow. The sink, the kitchen, wow. <laughs> and, I went, and I went to the restaurant back, and I remember, and this went on for, I don't know exactly, around three or four days, I made memories in that state. 
and I was writing in my memories, like, I, I have no idea what is happening, it's just something changed. And so in Ruda, he came to Vienna for a visit. I remember I was, we had Kirtan in Vienna and I was still in that state of consciousness. And I was playing Kirtan with the Manjira. I just closed my eyes and I remember I didn't want to open my eyes anymore. Just immersed in the Kirtan. It was just like, no, do I play right? Don't I play right? It just didn't bother me. And I remember I, I didn't tell it to anybody. So as I called Swamin Ruda, can you please uh, come in my room? And I was just telling him what, what is happening with me. And he just had tears in his eyes and he just looked at me and he said, and that's just a drop of the ocean what is waiting for us. And then after four days, and that's the funny part, after four days, it was too much. It was too much of responsibility. It was too much of, there was no, okay, do I save or not? There was impossible to make any excuse. And that started to turn in my mind. I became insecure again. I opened Amazon Prime and just watched one science fiction movie after the other. I said, I want to go back. It's too much. And then when I came to the ashram, I have darshan and I just said thank you to Guruji. Later I, I could sp speak to him, I just was telling him the story. And the only thing what he did and said was, he raised his hand and he said, patience. And this, and I said it yesterday in the satsang, the quality of patience. Patience is not something like a burden. Actually, patience is like a security program for us. So we can receive what God and Guru is giving us little by little. We make step by step. Because in that moment, and Guruji gave me the experience of making a little bit higher jump my system was not ready for that. That's why it's so important to accept and receive what he's giving us little by little, little by little. And then the last thing he's saying, made, making them his devotees. And that's actually one of the most beautiful things. I remember when I just met Guruji and I was listening to his satsangs and he just said one sentence. He said, the purpose of life is to have a relationship with God. <laughs> and I remember I was sitting on the table, I was in a relationship and at, uh, at that time, she was in the work. I was alone in the living room and he said just this sentence and I, I became panic mode. Because I realized I have no relationship to God. And Guruji just said it in such a natural, casual way. Yes, it's the purpose of life. You still don't have it? I was such panic stricken. Oh my God, what should I do? What should I do? How can I start to have a relationship with God? I just know how to have a relationship with my friends, family, and so on. I want to know what it is to have a relationship with that creator of me, of everything which I see around me. And then last, last but not least, he says, so they can follow their dharma in their minds. So as we see, what connects all these Hindu paths? There are six factors. And one of the main factors, the last factor, how to achieve moksha, how to attain God is to follow Dharma. So what do we get in that path, in the teaching of Guruji? He's giving us a purpose in life. He's giving us Dharma. He's giving us the right way of living. And this is, this I see the beauty of, and it sounds funny maybe, the beauty of limitation. 
Because people say, oh, you, are, you have a guru, you have to do this, you have to do sadhana, and so on. But actually, the sickness nowadays is that we have too many possibilities. Look at the youngsters nowadays. They don't know what to do. They start something, and they sh let it go. Start something, let it go. Oh, why? Because I, maybe I could do this, maybe I could do that. Nobody wants to go deeper in the path. Nobody even knows what's the purpose of life. And we just take it for granted. Yeah, yeah, live according to Dharma. But actually, living a Dharmic way is how our life becomes not just a gift for us, but everybody around us. And what Guruji said, change yourself and then you change the whole world. Just recently in online Dashan. It's not going around, going on protests and trying to change the government or whatever. No, changing ourselves, living according to Dharma, and this is how we change the whole world. So, and as we go to the year 2024, one of the things what we can do to help Guruji, because when we see added all these qualities, we receive so much from God and Guru, but it's a cooperation. How many people raise their hands that we have negative qualities? Everybody. So how, how can we change that? How can we help our Guru and God to change that? We develop positive qualities. And there is one thing, you can take it or not, which helped me a lot, is to have a, this is very practical, <laughs> to have a habit app. Everybody has a phone, right? No? no? Okay, one person. <laughs> but 99.9% .9 of people have a phone. We have so many different programs on our phone, but one thing which really changed, and this is connected to the quality of Guruji said perseverance, is to develop a habit means we have to do it every day. We take the phone every day in our hands. So putting a habit app on our phone, on the main screen. You just open it, you can create your own habits however you wish to, reading the Bhagavad Gita every day, doing Kriya two times a day, uh, studying uh, Mridanga, whatever, just take it, and then you can make a check every day. And then you can see how much you do this day. And that's actually how we change all these negative patterns to positive ones. So I wish you a nice year, 2024. May we become what Guruji is wishing from us to the best version why we came here in this life. Jai Gurudev.